Um, I'm afraid this is going to be oh, quite a bit of rambling on my part. I don't have any notes prepared or anything. Uh, I've sort of hashed uh, what I'm about to talk about uh, out in my mind a couple of times. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm ready for, you know, camera, uh, but let's see where we can take this. Uh, what I want to talk about is interpersonal comparisons of value, uh, and a very specific example of interpersonal comparison of value that uh, came out of a common discussion I had with the one YouTuber. Uh, before I do that, I'm smoking a pipe, right? Now, some people uh, complain that I smoke on camera. Not recently, some time ago, I had someone complain that I smoke on camera and that I take too much time smoking on camera. But here's the thing, I only smoke uh, like a two, three times a week mainly like Friday nights and week weekend nights um, and that's also the time when I have time time of day and time of week where I have the time to do YouTube videos so I'm trying to combine business with pleasure in fact I'm trying to combine pleasure with pleasure now this pipe is probably gonna go out yeah forget it ah cigars work better because they don't come out they don't go out so easily but anyway, I just wanted to explain, it wasn't, you know, I'm not trying to offend anybody or anything, and I'm not trying to show off, it's just that I'm trying to enjoy two, th enjoy two things that I enjoy doing at the same time, because both take uh, quite a bit of time. So, uh, interpersonal comparison of value. A YouTuber uh, made a statement, uh, I forget, I, I forget the name of the YouTuber. They made a statement in a video that I watched, it uh, said, uh, well, you know, if you look at a hundred dollar bill and you look at a, at a at a millionaire and a and a poor dude, uh, obviously the poor dude needs it more than the millionaire. And I pointed out to him that it's actually not obvious at all. It's not something we can even state. And he replied, "Of course, uh, of course we do. Of course we know that. Of course we know that a poor guy." A homeless guy, say, needs a $50 bill or a $100 bill more than a millionaire needs that $100 bill. Uh, somewhere in that discussion, the, the, the word need changed to the word value. Um, and I think it's actually better f for me to try to make my case uh, to use the word value. So then I thought about it and I said, okay, well, it, it is kind of obvious on some level, right, that someone who's homeless and hungry needs the hundred dollar bill more than someone who's a millionaire and has, you know, he, you know, physically, if if a hundred dollars disappeared uh, off of their bank account, they would probably not even notice. Um, does it mean that we can say? Uh, does it mean that we know that um, this poor dude, a homeless guy? needs or values a hundred dollars more than a millionaire um... well let's get a little technical about it so let's say well, before we get really technical and really uh... Um, s strict in our reasoning let's just say okay so there's a given a there's a given hundred dollar bill okay? maybe the homeless guy had just been given a, an in-kind donation of food and he is eaten, eaten and uh, we know that, at least I do, that uh, people who are homeless are actually used to living in, in very modest conditions, right? And they do not, like, they do not spend their days uh, um, decrying the fact that they don't have a Bentley or a Maserati or a McMansion or a yacht. Um, in fact, when they get to eat, and when they get some, you know, warm blanket or something, or they get to spend, uh, you know, they get to not get wet out in the rain because they can, they can cover themselves with something or, or hide under the bridge or whatever, you know, they can actually be pretty happy, right? They, they seem happy. At the same time, we know that millionaires may be very unhappy people. Uh, despite all the money that they have, there's always 
let's say, you know, we, ha we have a case of a millionaire who always wants more, let's say more money or more material possessions. So um, let's say he's trying to buy a yacht or a private jet, and he's uh, $100 short of a, hundred, of, of, a, of a private jet. And he really wants it for whatever reason. It's an irrational reason. He's totally vain and useless, this guy, but he wants this private jet. And he puts all of his wealth together, and he's $100 short. And he really wants, really, really wants that uh, private jet. And at the moment, he's, he feels like he could do anything to get his hands on you know, enough money to get that private jet now. He wants it now. Like, he probably could you know, go work tomorrow or you know, do some consulting or whatever it is that he does, you know, whatever is uh, you know, his career, how he earned the millions. He could probably go borrow some tomorrow or you know, next week or something from, from one of his friends, whatever. But he wants it now and is really unhappy that he doesn't have that, that $100. You can imagine any kind of specific situation where our millionaire guy, our hypothetical millionaire guy, really wants the hundred dollars. And we can also, at the same time, imagine a hypothetical situation where our homeless guy is is kind of fine, he's okay for the moment. And sure, if he if if you offered him a hundred bucks, he would gladly take it. But it's not like he feels that it's either a hundred dollars or death. Uh, you know, he would he would kill. To get a hundred dollars, hundred dollars uh, in his pocket, so you can imagine situations where the intensity with which one person, you know, a rich person desires a particular uh, material good or a sum of money, is actually higher than uh, the intensity with which um, a poor person desires the same object. But you will notice, of course, that I'm not being very accurate. Uh, what do you mean, the intensity with which someone desires something? Can we measure it? No. I mean, not at the moment, we, we can. Um, but now we're going to get into the gist of, uh, you know, what, what my thoughts have been on this matter. When we say somebody values something, we're not talking about the intensity of feeling that they have about this object. The intensity of feeling, first of all, it's a fleeting thing. and changes from moment to moment. Second of all, it's not measurable. But third, it is not what we, what we talk about when we say the word value. Uh, and here, I think proxyology is very useful in understanding what it is, uh, you know, what people mean when they say the word value, what, what, what the concept of value actually entails. You see, in praxeology, value or valuing uh, as an action, or rather, you know, as, as something that you do, right, uh, the process of valuing something, valuation as an, uh, as an act, is part of human action. It stems from the simple fact that uh, we deal with scarce material objects in uh, the world that we live in. What we mean by scarce is there isn't enough of any particular object, uh, or rather of most objects, to go around to satisfy every need of every human being. You know, like say hundred dollar bills. If hundred dollar bills were as abundant as air, that we wouldn't think of them as material goods. They would not function as money, and we would not economize in them, and we would would not have any contests over them because we don't seem to have any contest in under normal conditions. We don't seem to have any contest over air, which is breathe. You know, we're not bothered by the fact that other people are breathing, even when they're breathing. You know, in, in close proximity to us, because air under normal conditions is super abundant it's not a scarce resource therefore there's no contest going on for the air however if you take something like a car or a hundred dollar bill there's only one person who can control the use of that object at a time and uh, that is why we have things like property rights or concepts like property rights to determine who should uh, have access to and control the use of any particular object that is definable, that has clear boundaries, um, that is physically finite, right? The other problem there, of course, is we, we can't see the boundaries of any particular particle of air. It's very difficult to determine, you know, what, what, what particular physical portion or particle of air is where, and where it goes, and where it came from. And it's, it would be very difficult if we wanted to. It would be very difficult to track specific particles of air because it's invisible. 
you know, so it's not detectable by our senses. But a hundred dollar bill is is visible. It's it's very nicely detectable by our senses. Therefore, we can have it's a contestable resource, right? So valuing something is part of human action. What that means is human action, by definition, is a choice. Uh, of one out of several alternatives. In any situation, you can you can you can only do one thing with your body at the same time. I mean, consciously, volitionally, uh, purposefully. I mean, of course, you, you know, you're breathing and your heart is beating, but those are not human actions. We're not deciding to breathe in and breathe in and breathe out. Uh, most of the time, we're not. Uh, when we're running, say, yeah, sure, we can control the tempo of our breathing and the, and the cadence of our breathing. But in, in, under normal human conditions, we, we just breathe. We don't think twice about it. Our hearts beat. We, or at least most of us, cannot, uh, by an act of will, stop our heart or speed it up or slow it down. So those are not actions. And, you know, sneezing is not an action. But something that has a purpose, somewhere where, a situation where we define an end, something that we want uh, to get or achieve or keep. Um, and then we, we, we do something using resources, means, uh, to achieve that end. That's human action, purposeful behavior, right? So, valuing is a component, an inseparable component of human action. Uh, specifically, when we choose one possible course of action out of many or several alternatives, we thereby demonstrate that we value whatever end we're pursuing by that action over any other end that we could pursue but are not. Right now I'm recording this video, uh, thereby I'm demonstrating my preference for recording a video over, I don't know, reading a book, watching a show, um, you know, dozens of other things that I could be doing at this moment, but I am recording this video. That demonstrates that I prefer doing this over any, you know, all of the other things that I could be doing with my time, with my body, with my energy, with my objects, with my property, at the same time. Because I can only be here, you know, in one place at, at one time, do one thing at one time. So, if you look at, at the concept of value from that position, then it, it's clear then that to say that I value something uh, would only make sense in the, context, in the context of me doing something to demonstrate that, you know, valuation of that preference. Um, that's why, by the way, polls are not very good indicators of what people actually prefer. Because what happens in a poll is you're, you're asked a question and you answer a question, but, uh, you know, if the question could be anything. In a situation X, would you do A, B, or C? You, know, you answer, I would do B, or I would do C, or whatever. How? That is not necessarily, you know, any indication at all of what you would actually do if you found yourself in situation X. Your actual, um, uh, the, the, the action that you actually take when you find yourself in that situation, if you ever do, could be entirely different from what you answered when you were asked this question by a pollster. And it should be obvious why, you know. If we answer questions to look good in our own eyes, to look good... Uh, in the eyes of whoever's listening, uh, whatever it is, our, our reasons are not relevant because all we're doing when we're answering a question in a poll a certain way, we're demonstrating our preference to answer, to give that particular answer in that particular situation. And it, the answer we give doesn't at all have to be actually describing, you know, the, 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 action, the action we would actually take if situation X really occurred. So when we say, you know, you know, we constantly, well, you know, people make New Year's resolutions that they don't keep, right? People make promises they don't keep. They say the words, I will do X, Y, Z. And then the time comes and they don't do it. Why? Well, they change their mind, the circumstances change. So the only way to know that I, I, I in fact, value a certain course of action or prefer a certain course of action is to see me do it. That's the notion of demonstrated preference. And preference doesn't really make sense in any other context. 
other than demonstrated preference, I don't think it even makes sense for us to spend a lot of time talking about what people prefer. Because the meaning of the word prefer sort of gets diluted once you divorce it from physical action. Um, and here I, I want to borrow an example from um, from Roderick Long, who in turn borrowed it from Wittgenstein, I think. Let's say, and by the way, uh, being able to, to, to read people's minds wouldn't really help. Uh, it would not solve the problem of, oh, we can really discern people's actual preferences uh, if we could only read their minds. And that, by, I think that also addresses the, the, the notion that some people have that, oh, you know, value can be measured if we can only measure the intensity of our feelings or your know, brain waves or whatever, the intensity with which our, you know, brain cells activate and do their stuff, then we could measure value. I don't think that's even possible. Uh, so again, the, 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 the example from from Wittgenstein by way of Roderick Long is imagine, imagine a person says that they have certain plans and they tell you what the plans are. And then you keep observing that person and they never do those things. So they said they had a plan. But they never do those things, right? Well, if they don't do them for, for you know, five five minutes from when they told you they had those plans, it's nothing special, but if you continue to observe them for days and weeks and months, and they never get around to doing those things, well, what would we think about them really having those plans? Would we believe that they, in fact, have those plans? You see? Um, well, let's say we ask them again, and they said, sure, yeah, I plan to do X and Y and Z. Absolutely. And then they continue to not do X, Y, and Z. Would it be true then that they have those plans? I don't know, but it's a. Uh, <laughs> they said they said the, the, the plan. Well, let's say that the same person writes those plans down on a piece of paper, you know, a bulleted list or something, and they have the word "plan" written on top, you know, across the page. Does that make it uh, true that they have those plans if they never act on them? I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. Or let's say we could peer into their brain, peer into their mind and read their thoughts. And let's say we see the word plan in their thoughts. And we see all those things that they said they planned on doing in their brain. Right? And yet they never do them. Would it mean that they actually have those plans? You see, the word plan itself, if you think about it, it's a plan to do something, right? And unless it's actually done, it's hard to say how those plans mean anything. The same thing with preference. Uh, when we say I prefer, what do we actually say? What are we actually saying? When I say I prefer sunny weather to, uh, you know, rainy weather. Okay, fine, sure. That's that's a, that's an expression of emotion. Okay. Well, but emotions are. We I, I think I already spoke to that. that emotions are impossible to. Um, measure and compare you could I guess you could you know if somebody somebody is acting like completely cool and they're not excited by something and then yet somebody else is excited you know very greatly by the same uh, thing that they're seeing we can say yes this person feels stronger the second person feels stronger about whatever is happening than the first we could say that but maybe maybe that that first person is actually pretending they're they're you know uh, they actually feel very, very deeply, but they're not showing anything on their face or in their gestures or in their behavior. Uh, and maybe the second person is also faking. Maybe they don't particularly feel anything, but they want to show that they they, they feel something. Right. So it's just by observing behavior. And none of the things that I'm saying right now are actually you know sort of very controversial uh, or or very far fetched. You, people fake behavior all the, uh, people fake emotions all the time or conceal emotions all the time. So when we say when we say I you know prefer or value or a per person X prefers or values whatever what does it mean when I say that I plan to do something what does it mean do my plans lose their meaning if I never act on them would we be wise to consider that I still have those plans if I declared them over and over again and yet never acted on them in any normal situation you know, people would discount my statements that I have those plans. They would think that he really doesn't have them. He's just saying that. He doesn't really plan to do those things. Because, hey, he's had ample opportunity 
do that. You know, it's, it's been years since been, he's been telling us that he's planning to do those things. He never does them. So I don't really believe he has that plan. Um, same thing with, with action. If somebody consistently tells you, I, uh, and this is, this is the meat and potatoes, I think. You know, if somebody says, I think that poor people need wealth more than, 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 than rich people. It's absolutely obvious to me. They value it more. Well, okay. Uh, they need or value that wealth more. Okay. Now, can that preference... So, so what, what, what this person is saying is, I, I would... What, what are they really saying? And again, I, 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 I warned you that this is going to be a, you know, a bit of a rambling um, a video on my part because I haven't like, uh, flushed it out 100% clearly what I was going to say. So I'm wondering where this is going to take me. So when when this person when this YouTuber was telling me, of course the poor person needs the hundred dollar bill more than the rich rich guy. Um, he doesn't know. I think I've demonstrated that it, it's at least plausible to imagine situations and times at which, you know, uh, you know a given dollar bill would be actually m uh, more strongly desired by the rich person than by the poor person. So it's not obvious, or at least not obvious. Uh, at, at, at any, any old, at all times, right? But I think what this person is saying, I mean, you can, if you're strictly looking at it from the praxeological perspective, I think uh, it only makes sense to say what you prefer, uh, or w when you talk about other people's preferences, since we we can't read their minds, and even if we could, it wouldn't help. It, it only makes sense to talk about demonstrated preferences. But see, demonstrated preference in this particular example, where two people are contesting. A given hundred a given one hundred dollar bill, they're not even contesting it necessarily. But there's one dollar bill, one hundred dollar one uh, one hundred dollar bill, and two people, right? And when you know a third person says, "Oh, this person clearly needs this dollar bill, this hundred dollar bill, more than that person," what does it mean? We cannot compare. Well, first of all, what does it mean to need something? I, I uh, suggest that we use the word value. What, what would it mean if we say that you know, person A values object X higher than person B values object X? Since value is a demonstrated preference, and value is a rank, mind you, value is not a, a quantity. Value is just me comparing available alternatives and choosing the one that I prefer right now. So I'm placing it higher on my value scale. Therefore, value is a rank, it's not a quantity. So, all you can say about a value, when comparing values, is first of all, you can only compare values in the eye of one beholder, one actor. And second of all, uh, we can't measure them and, and, and therefore say that, oh, you know, course of action A is preferred twice as strongly as course of action B. All we can say is one value is higher on a value scale than another. Uh, most of you guys know this, but uh, if we if we apply this to the situation of this poor guy, rich guy, and a hundred dollar bill, it doesn't even make sense. It's an incoherent notion to say you know person A values object X more than person B values the same object because you can <laughs> it's it's impossible to compare. Value is demonstrated through action. By definition, it's the action of the same person. When you have two separate people, the whole thing collapses. It, it does not make sense. It, it is a non-cognitive statement uh, to say that you know one object is preferred more strongly by one person than by another person. All you could, you could say that you know one person prefers one object to another object, sure, or one course of action to another course of action, and we can say that when that person demonstrates that preference by acting it out. Uh, but two people cannot act out that same preference. It, it just doesn't make sense. But I think what this person was really saying, what the YouTube was really saying, is, is that he would prefer that the poor person have a $100 bill than a rich person. Uh, to, uh, for, than for the rich person... Oh, I mean, they, they would prefer uh, for the poor guy to get a $100 bill as opposed to the rich, rich guy. I can understand that. I can understand. I, I would like it better if a given $100 bill would end up in the pocket of a homeless guy uh, than if it did in the pocket of, an, of a millionaire. It's my personal feeling. Is that evaluation in the praxeological sense? No. 
It's not because I am not deciding between any two courses or more courses of action here, right? When I say, mm, I really wish this, this $100 bill would end up in the, in the pocket of this homeless guy in the street as opposed to this, uh, you know, uh, fat capitalist pig in, uh, you know, top hat and with a pencil thin mustache, right? Uh, with you know, bags of money with dollar signs on them. I could say I, I would prefer that this to that. Sure, I can say that. But it's not a praxeological sense of prefer. Because I can only prefer between two courses of action available to me. Well, do I have $100? I do. Okay. What do I prefer to do with $100? What, what is my preference with regards to a $100 bill that is in my pocket? Well, since it's still in my pocket, it should be obvious what my preference is. If it's an actual $100 bill in my pocket or in my bank account, my preference is to keep it as a cash balance. I'm not buying anything with it. Right? I'm not giving it away. I'm, I'm keeping it as cash balance. The fact that I have a $100 bill and I haven't done anything with it shows my preference for keeping it as cash balance. To, for whatever, for, I don't know, emergency expenses, whatever people keep cash balances for. But that's my demonstrated preference. To state anything else would be to, to you know, uh, would be absurd. It would be to contradict the obvious. And I want to go a little further than that. Uh, when somebody says, well, it's obvious that this person needs, you know, the poor person needs a $50 bill or a $100 bill more than the rich person. Well, how rich is rich? I mean, if, if, if we're going to talk uh, about uh, poor and rich, the you know the second part of the statement could be referring to any person who's substantially or somewhat richer than the first person, right? Well, how about yourself? How about the speaker himself? The speaker himself had recorded numerous videos, uh, which suggests to me that they own a laptop with a webcam. Right? That's worth at least several hundred dollars, right? Um, they also have the time uh, to produce those videos. But by the way, the videos were actually pretty well produced. Uh, that suggests that they have income that covers their expenses and leaves them time to produce those produce those videos. I uh, well, it could be the case that they're making a lot of time, uh, a lot of money off of the uh, Google partnership or whatever. But I don't believe, and I don't ha don't know anybody who's making a lot of money uh, from Google. So the making of videos could not be the source of their income. So they must have other source of income that leaves them with ample leisure time to produce the videos. Um, so. What is that person's preference with regards to cash, any sum of cash, $50, $10? And, you know, if, if we ask them, they would probably say, well, $10 are needed more greatly by the poor person than by a rich person, obviously, sure. And then we could ask, well, what about your $10, $10 that you have in your wallet right now? Who needs it more? Do you need it more, or does a poor person, a homeless guy in the street, need it more? I think they would be compelled to say that the poor guy obviously needs it more. Then the next question would be, and I know that we're crossing with from pseudoscientific plane onto a personal choice plane, but I want to do this to demonstrate that that was pseudoscientific. It's not obvious that what what they're stating uh, from the very beginning. It's not obvious at all. We could ask them, you know, why is that ten dollar bill still in your pocket if if it's uh, needed more greatly by this poor guy? Why do you still have it? Well, they still have it exactly because they prefer to keep it. <laughs> you know, given a, given a, a choice between handing the bill over to a homeless guy in the street and keeping it in their pocket, they've obviously chosen the latter. Right? So, what does it even mean then in that context for this person to keep saying, but of course it's obvious that any given sum of money is needed more by, or more strongly by, a poor person than by a rich What does it even mean? I think I've already demonstrated that you can't really say that with any with any accuracy. You we, you don't know. Uh, it could be true some of the time. Even if we grant that you could compare the intensity of feeling and that that, that would be meaningful, which I'm not sure that it would be. But let's say it would be. Uh, we don't know what people value just by how they feel about some things or what they say. Okay. The only way to know about what person actually values is to look at what they do. 
okay? And, hey, a poor person might decide to mug somebody for a hundred bucks. Sure. That demonstrates their preferences. But what are, what are those preferences? <laughs> of course, the, one of the preferences that is demonstrated by mugging is that the mugger clearly values having uh, another person's property, grabbing it and running away with it, demonstrates that to the person keeping their property. Sure. Yeah. They're also demonstrating that they're, they're, they value the potential payoff of a mugging. To, uh, they, they value that um, as, a, as a better uh, alternative to... So, so the alternative is that I don't mug anybody and I don't end up with their money in my pocket, or I mug them, I end up with, I might end up with the money in their pocket. They might be carrying a gun, not in New York City, but you know somewhere else. They might be wearing, uh, carrying a gun. But if if I succeed and grab their money and run away, uh, you know they could pursue me. They could call the cops. The cops could find me, catch me, and I could end up in prison. So obviously, you know, a slightly intelligent mugger would probably think these things through very quickly before attempting to mug somebody. And if they proceed to, to mug somebody, we understand that they prefer, you know, the bundle of perceived benefits and risks, uh, in exactly, you know, the, exactly the way that we we observe uh, uh, their action, right? Uh, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, so uh, it's very hard to establish, as I'm trying to say, uh, it's very hard to establish what it even means that. Uh, you know, a poor person values a ten dollar bill or a hundred dollar bill more than the rich person does. Um, them mugging the rich person, the poor guy mugging the rich person, would not establish that for us. Uh, peering into their minds and reading their thoughts, and, and even I don't know, measuring somehow their emotions about uh, a dollar bill, would not help us because there isn't one common unit of account to measure emotions and again we're not comparing emotions people can people's emotions can change and people may feel very strong emotions and still go against them right so if somebody says if some if imagine a conflicted person who's feeling a very strong emotion he, let's say i don't know a husband who's tempted by um, another woman and he really wants to pursue the woman the woman really likes him and the woman will actually be with him if he should have her um, and he's very, very tempted, and his feelings are very strong, but for whatever reason, he decides that he doesn't want to break up his family and leave his children, right? Um, and he, he acts, what does he do? He stays with his wife, and he breaks off the relationship with that woman. Now, his feelings, if you measured his feelings, or, or somehow gauged his feelings, or peered into his soul and saw his emotions, he's torn up. His feelings are totally telling him, go, go, uh, you know, go after this, this uh, other woman and be with her. Uh, and yet, his will or conscience or whatever is telling some, him something else, and he ends up, you know, staying with his wife and children. What does he prefer? If you looked at his emotions, you know, um, or maybe it was his sense of duty, whatever, it doesn't matter. If you looked at his emotions, they would indicate clearly he wants to be with this other woman. If you look at his actions, he stays with his wife. W which does he prefer? Uh, in what context does it even make sense for us to talk about him preferring anything? It only makes sense in the context of what he does. Because if we stated, well, he preferred being with this other woman, and yet he decides to break off with her and stay with his wife would it make sense I don't think it would make sense right so again the the notion of com, you know comparing uh, utilities or values or uh, needs inter interpersonally is incoherent it doesn't make sense um, you probably noticed that I made a little jab at um, People who say, that, "Oh, poor, poor people need wealth more or need resources more than the rich people," and yet they do not, you know when, when it comes to their own resources, their own money, um, they demonstrate that they do not believe that, at least not universally. So they may believe, "Oh, oh, I would prefer that this particular millionaire's wealth were distributed to these particular poor people." Oh, fine, you know, it's a it's a statement. You can make it. You can say that. What does it mean? It doesn't practically doesn't mean shit. Because again, it's not it's not one of the choices you're faced with, and uh, you're not going and, and mugging the millionaire and you know breaking into their vault and stealing their wealth and physically carrying it to the people that you think should have it. 
so I, maybe it's for fear of retaliation or police or whatever, but you're not doing it. So what does it mean for you to say, I would prefer that that were the case? It doesn't mean anything. I mean, it means that these are the thoughts in your head, these are the feelings that you, hate, that you have, but beyond that, not much. So uh, the whole thing about comparing utilities, values, and needs interpersonally is total baloney. Um, it does not make sense. It does not compute. And I know I've probably bored you to death, uh, but I I wanted to get it out of my system. I really wanted to get it out of my system I, because it kind of made sense, you know, on some level, on the surface. Kind of makes sense. Yeah, sure. You, you know, look at a poor guy and a, you know, think of this hundred dollar bill, crisp hundred dollar bill. And yeah, wouldn't it be nice if you know instead of uh, this millionaire guy who doesn't even know how many of these he has, and you know, he, he, if he lost one. Uh, as he was fishing his uh, car keys out of his pocket, uh, he wouldn't even notice, and yet it would make this other guy's day or week, you know, and we could feed him for a few days or something. And we feel, yeah, we would like that. But, but again, you know, so so we would like that. Uh, what follows from that, exactly? I don't know. I, I don't think anything follows from that. It's a, it's an emotion. It's a, it's a thought. I don't think anything follows from that, Uh because if we think a little bit, we understand that the only choices we can make legitimately are over our own resources. And every time, if, if you know somebody who truly believes in the quality and quality of wealth, isn't it, isn't it interesting that uh, if you point out to them as they're buying their latte in Starbucks, right, that, well, you don't really need the Starbucks to survive. Starbucks to survive. You, you'll like the Starbucks, but you wouldn't die or even suffer too greatly if you were to forego this little pleasure. Why don't you, instead of buying yourself a latte or going to the movies or getting anything nice and unnecessary for yourself, like a nicer pair of clothes or a pair of shoes or you know, a nicer pen or a new laptop when your older laptop is perfectly functional, uh, whatever, or a nicer car or living in a house that's bigger than you absolutely need, and there isn't really any definite amount of living space that you absolutely need. You know, I grew up with <laughs> a family of four living on 200 square feet, and we thought we were fine. We, we weren't suffering. We weren't suffering. Uh, and I, I talk about that in my Back in the USSR videos, if you're interested, you can sort of go onto my channel and check them out. Um, uh, there's several in the series. Uh, if you're interested in this topic, I, you know you might find my anecdotes interested, interesting because I grew up in the Soviet Union, right? So, you know how much. So, so I would say, you know, since I, if I was not happy, I wasn't suffering growing up in, uh, you know, a family of four and on, on, on 250 square feet of living space in an apartment. So, if you have, uh, if you have like more than 65 square feet of living space, that's more than you need. You know, if you have like a, uh, you know, 500 square feet of living space for yourself, that's about 435 square feet more than you need, at least, or more. I don't know. Maybe if I'd grown in a smaller, grown up in a smaller apartment, I would have been fine too. Um, so, when you're consuming anything that you don't need, and the, this need thing is so indeterminate, <laughs> so difficult to, I mean, like, you know, how many calories of, of, of food a day do you need? You know, what 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 should the composition be of the food intake uh, that that you know you ingest every day? Uh, what is the cheapest uh, combination of foods to give you the uh, that indeterminate amount of calories that you need, but not one calorie more than what you need? So anything over that is then in violation of your own principle. If you believe that there should be quality, material quality, and that it, it's it's unfair. And, um, um, and unjust for some people who have less uh, material possessions than others, well, nobody really believes that. You see, you see when, when we look at their behavior, they demonstrate their preference for that inequality every minute of every day, pretty much, unless they're sleeping, right? Every waking hour, they demonstrate their preference for the reverse of what they state uh, their moral preferences are. Uh, they do not act out their preferences, and that's why those are not really their preferences. Uh, they are not expressing or demonstrating them through action, and therefore those are just words that they say. They may or may not be aware of the fact, you can point it out to them. Anyway, this has really gone too long, almost 40 minutes. Uh, 
Yeah, that's it. I think I got it out of my system now. <laughs>